Hello, everyone. It is montage time on the Jules and Monty director's commentary, so welcome and enjoy. Uh, this is Days of Roses by Martha Malo, who is uh, one of my best friends from Australia and is an amazingly talented artist. Go check her out. I love all the colors. It just it sets it off with such like a oh this is gonna be fun. Yeah, this was also the episode where someone commented asking me what my lipstick color was, and I've like never felt more accomplished. I'm always impressed by Evie's ability to uh, secure a bun. As long as we're talking about this, can we just talk about how fabulous Evie is through the entire series, but also how people on YouTube have noticed how fabulous she is and just love it? I'm a fan. I think it's especially these um, these kind of moments where Evie is framed, you know, centered, like, because this frame shows up a number of times, and it'll be, you know, in different lighting with different looks, but she is always so strikingly beautiful. You know, we, we just get comments like, oh my god, those eyes, those lips! Oh, she just looks so good. <laughs> Evie's having a moment. <laughs> We're embarrassing her. It's I'm fun. embarrassed. I will say that I do love seeing how my eyes change color depending on what lighting we have because they're really blue and here they look like totally gray which is so interesting. I think it also helps that there's a lot of blue tones around you like my desk is overwhelmingly blue um, and brownish so it really yeah. contrasts how you look. Imogen and I had a very blue room. We're definitely like cool yeah. color palette people. Hey it worked! <laughs> Well, she's obviously not coming back anytime This soon, is us so explaining how the montage is diegetic. It also was a way of going, hey, look, time has passed. They have not been dating for three days. Try three months. <laughs> it was an attempt to oh, stuck a relationship in the middle. That was why we put in the montage. We wanted to show the passage of time so that it isn't just the sort of, like, weak relationship that Romeo and Juliet have. The Jules and Monty are together for an entire semester. Yeah, I think, and... I especially like this because, honestly, one of my least favorite complaints about Romeo and Juliet that I hear from people who, like, read it in high school or whatever, they're like, they're only together for three days. That's not real at all. This is so stupid and dumb. And I'm like, it is theater, okay? Like, but I love that we were... That was really pretentious of me, but, like, it just bothers me. But I love that in Keep this going. series we were able to extend that from like the three day period into, you know, three months so that it did seem more real to people. Also, oh my god, this is so cute. <laughs> I love that the, uh, the carrot moment in the in our dining hall made it in because that was kind of technically post shoot. We were just at lunch. The, yeah, just we the group of us were at lunch and we said, hey, you know, goof around for a minute and we'll, you know, we'll film you, but who knows if anything I think Ed actually, it. I think Ed actually just did that and then he turned the camera on. <laughs> Yeah. The this was one... the entire morning of just constantly kissing for like three hours. <laughs> it was so much fun. The one um the one shot I absolutely pushed for, like I insisted on having in the montage, because Imogen was like, Oh Evie, like what do you want in the montage? Because like, it was kind of like a group effort to decide where we were gonna film. And I was like, there has to be a shot in between library books where they're kissing in the stacks because that's the cutest thing I can imagine and like I love, that moment moment. Of library moments. I love that moment where you just jump in front of the camera just like nope like, I've been putting up with the shit for a month now this is awful so if you look really carefully in the last uh, where I took the book off his head I actually said no Ed no <laughs> that's right you broke character and it was amazing no, Ed, no. Oh, yes, I just love... Oh, man, that was... That so montage was originally, like, two minutes long. I'm there was, a, there was a, a, a meta montage of just kiss shots. Rapid fire, maybe 10 or 15 kiss shots. So many. We should mm. release, like, an uncut montage. I feel like uh, the Tumblr peeps would get a lot of gift mileage out of that. I think it's called oh, Jules and Monty, the web series. Even if you're not trying to hold down a secret relationship. Also, this is this so is... nice because this is a super warm shot in our room, mm -hmm. which you don't see often, and we definitely, this was intentional because we kind of wanted to get that, like, she's in love, warm glow. 
a good it use of the, a, the yellow door. It's mm-hmm. one of the first times that you see Jules speaking to the camera comfortably. Um, and we're, you know, we're nine episodes in, so it took our time. Um, <laughs> but, I, you know, I like that Nancy's still in the bed over this. The training re- wheels are still kind of on, but now she's slowly getting the hang of it. I also love, um, this, this is one of, actually, no, sorry, this is Andy's favorite episode. Most importantly, the part at the end, this is his favorite moment. This is his favorite part, I think, of the web series. I've spoken to him about it a couple of times. And he just loves what Imogen does here and how candid she is and how, how natural it is. And I think, I think what you just said about her opening up is true. It's, just, it's nice to see Jules comfortable and relaxed in front of the camera and just talking for a little bit. I think it's also really nice to see you know, an example of how this relationship has affected her without Monty there. You, know, you think of, oh, they look so cute together, blah, 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 but to see... To see her alone and to see a notable difference in how in how she behaves and how she holds herself, I think, is a huge testament to the, to how strong their relationship really is. That she it 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 does change her even when he's not there. It's funny because you never see them actually say "I love you" to each other, never in person. Which but is never- you can see them say it. It's all in the eyes. Well, we never wanted them to say I love you because that kind of was, I mean, they consummate their relationship, but that was, is the consummation is saying I love you and it doesn't quite happen ever, which is, it's what, you know, in, in Romeo and Juliet, they're never able to really live out their relationship. Um, so that's always until next time or whatever it is because they expect this to continue for, you know, forever for a long time and that never is the case. So they say I love you to the camera, but never to each other. Um, I also, this was the first, I'm just going to keep talking, this is the first episode uh, where people started noticing my accent because I slipped up a whole bunch, <laughs> so I apologize for that. <laughs> I love that phrase, Nancy has been threatening a girl's night. I feel like that's definitely, that definitely, like, applies to mine and Imogen's life because, like, even though we were roommates, we were both so busy that, like, when we were planning, like, a roommate night, we had to be, like, you have to be here for roommate night. It is going to be this night. It's also really upsetting because Nancy is just about to leave for the party, so... Oops. Yeah, this is the night of everything falling to pieces. Yo. Also, this shirt is the one that Jules steals in episode 13, so foreshadowing. Well, because the next, like, what is it? Four hours happen within... Sorry, four episodes happen pretty much all within a 12-hour span. Is this a flashback to Eurydice engagement photo clothes? Yes. It Uh, is, because we liked how they looked. uh, In case people don't know, Ed and Imogen played Orpheus and Eurydice (laughs) in Sarah Rule's Eurydice. Um... Oh, and Emma A. did it, and I was in it. So, uh, lots of theatrical incest <laughs> happening. <laughs> All of it. Come on, guys. Uh, I'll put one of the photos to show you what we're referencing later. And uh, that moment where Jules falls out of the camera, that's what I was talking about earlier, is Andy's favorite moment. Just that part right there, as soon as Monty leaves, she's just falling out of frame. That's yeah. his favorite thing. Nancy, do you want to watch West Side Story? It was fun to do. I like the the reference this one. I've got to make an appearance at that. The um the Shakespeare in Love or um what was the other one? A West Side Story. <laughs> West Side. Now that it goes to Bad Boys Two, of all things, that could be the th- you know the door number three. It, it was originally one of the two options she suggests, and in a later draft we were like. Nah. <laughs> like, out. if we're going to do the Shakespeare thing, let's do it. Um, this mean, episode is. really is the kind of lost comedy episode. Um, we know. had a, somebody a while back write about whether this is a drama or a comedy, and I think that kind of falls in line with Romeo and Juliet, in that Romeo and Juliet is a comedy for the first couple of acts and then turns into a tragedy. Uh, and we try to stay true to that here in that. From episodes one to nine, you really are just seeing a love story and a comedy, and it's funny and you know fast flowing and everything like that. And then episode ten, everything goes downhill. So ten to eighteen is when the tragedy sets in, and we still try to keep it light every once in a while. But we were much, much more aware that this was darker material we were dealing with. So this was your last little. We're sorry. Have a cute scene. <laughs> Have a cute scene. Have a montage. <laughs> 
Guys, I have to say, speaking of like comedy versus tragedy, is the one is like one of the things I really regret from this process is that we didn't find a way to work in the do you bite your thumb at us, sir scene into oh, yeah. his web series. It's one of my favorite like Shakespearean so insult exchanges and like I can just I can just imagine like a couple of our extras like Jack and like Mitchell just be stupid. <laughs> Just like drunkenly outside of the party. Do you bite your thumb at me, sir? I don't bite my thumb at you, sir. <laughs> End up being like, Mr. You, sir. Who, sir? <laughs> we we should, really uh, could have thrown that in. Yeah, we probably. We could. Uh, I mean, we could always do some some lost Shakespeare. You know, yeah. Oh, that'd be fun. Next, time, next time I go and visit Marcus, him and I will do it as Nancy <laughs> and Mark. I think we gotta do a spin off. I think we gotta do <laughs> Jules and Manji Origins where we just set up the feud. <laughs> Jules and Manji Origins. We had a lot more Greek life sort of stuff in there too. Like um, Rose was part of a sorority, and I think Jules like and Nancy were at one point part of a sorority. Um, but I, I like the simplified version. I think it muddied it a little bit too much to have all these houses. Just the two of them are the what's important. And making up uh, fraternities and sororities' names is not as easy as it sounds because there are a lot that exist and sometimes things get a little bit muddied. Y yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Just so everybody knows, I think we've already said this, but Kappa, Kappa Alpha Psi was originally Kappa Alpha Pi, which does not exist, and then it got lost in confusion somewhere along the line. So... No, we did not mean to misrepresent any fraternities at all. We only really noticed after we already made and paid for t-shirts. Yeah. And after we'd been filming and saying Kappa yeah, Alpha Psi for filmed. a while. So, we there was no going back. back. I still am a big fan of the fact that we should have, like, dubbed over, so it would have been like, Welcome <laughs> to Kappa Alpha Pi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the idea of Cole the dubbing same clip. Pi the whole way through, but everybody is dubbed with Cole's voice. So even right. if it's Nancy, it's go just to Cole Alpha going Pi. <laughs> <laughs> right, you just use the same one every time. So that was episode nine, um... Probably my favorite episode, just because it's so happy. It's so well, happy. One of my favorites. I love how happy it is. I, 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 it's kind of our present for making everything horrible in episode 18. Yeah. <laughs> and 14, and after this in general. I was going to say, uh, and 12, 13. <laughs> Jules yeah. and Nati, everything is horrible. <laughs> Bitten, 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 bitten